in this video I am basically going to be showing you two ways to make a dress pattern and one is going to be making your full dress with no joining at the waist area and the other one is going to be how to make a dress pattern with joining at the waist area and I'm also going to show you how to reduce the zip bulge at the back of your dress. The reduction of the zip bulge for the two patterns are different, okay? So stick around, you're going to love this tutorial, it's really informative. And with this basic tutorial, we're going to make so many dresses and so much more designs to come. And without further ado, let's jump right into the video. To start this pattern, you need to make sure that your pattern is on fold, just like mine. And as you can see, I have gone and placed my zipper allowance on my pattern, one inch for zip allowance from top of my pattern to the bottom of my pattern. And this zip only applies to the back because we're going to be cutting the front and the back pattern together. Now, this line is going to serve as a marginal line at the front okay so i'm going to take another marginal line on the top of my pattern right here now from this line i'll take my shoulder to shoulder measurement divided by two and i'll take three inches from the marginal line now on my shoulder line i'll go downwards by one inch and connect my shoulder slope now the next thing you're going to do is to place in your neckline measurement. I am using three and a half for the width and three inches for the length. And I would connect my neckline curve. Now the next measurement we are going to take is our armhole circumference. And now I am going to connect the armhole line. Now measure what you have right here from shoulder to armhole. Now place it on your center front line and connect the mark. And this is going to be your chest line. Now the next measurement we're going to take is our shoulder to bust point. And the next one you're going to take is your shoulder to under bust. And the next measurement you're going to take is your shoulder to waist line. And once you're done placing those marks, you're going to connect all the marks. Now the next thing you're going to do is place one inch from the shoulder down for the back neckline and connect your neckline curve now from your waist take your waist to hip points and as you can see mine is 10 inches and once you're done connect the max now the next measurement you're going to take is the length you want for your dress and also add your hemming allowance now the next measurement you're going to take which is very important for placing in darts on your pattern is your bust span divided by two and as you can see i am taking it from my chest line to my hip line and i'll connect my marks now once you have done this the next thing you're going to do is to come downwards from your chest line by one inch now at this point you can go in and use one inch for your dart or one and a half inch or whatever you want for your dart okay but i'm going to be using half inch on both sides on my waist for my darts i just want a very simple dart now off from my hip line i'm going to go upwards by two inches as you can see and i'm going to connect my dart lines
and i am going to say this again guys notice how i take all my measurements from this line which i said is my zip allowance line and not from the edge of my pattern because i am cutting the front and the back together this line you see right here is going to serve as a marginal line for the front and the back and now we're going to start taking our body circumference starting from the bust i am taking my bust circumference divided by four and one inch for sewing allowance on my waistline I will take my waist circumference divided by four measure the dart you have right here and place it right back and place in your one inch for sewing allowance now i am taking my hip circumference divided by four and also one inch for sewing allowance now on your length you're going to measure your hip circumference already divided by four and minus two inches or one inch or one and a half or two and a half depending on how tapered and shaped up you want it to be and now i am also going to add my one inch for sewing allowance and i am going to go on and connect all my marks now on your armhole find the midpoint of your armhole and go inwards by half inch or one inch depending on how deep you want your armhole cuff to be now you're going to connect the mark and also for the back you're going to connect it to the midpoint mark now i am going to be using my curve ruler to connect all those marks and this is going to serve as my front armhole and this one is going to serve as my back armhole and we're going to start cutting out this pattern and we're going to cut out the back first and we're going to cut out the armhole of the back and then the neckline of the back the difference between the front and the back pattern is the zip and the dart the dart is different for the back now fold your hem like this and start cutting now at this point if you have a tracing wheel just trace out the bust span line that is the center line of the dart and trace out your zip allowance line and your bust line your waist line your hip line and also your hem line now open up the pattern and start cutting that center fold line on your pattern now once you're done with this if you don't have a tracing wheel to retrace your lines this is how to retrace your lines on the back pattern as you can see i am just retracing all the lines the waistline the hip line the bust line and the hemline and also the zip line now i am cutting the armhole of the front out and also the neckline of the front as you can see and we're going to now cut off that zipper allowance that we placed on the front like i told you now for this your center front when cutting it on your fabric you need to make sure that your fabric is on fold i am showing you an example of how your fabric should be just place that center front on the folded part of your fabric and pin your pattern to your fabric and cut. And now for the back pattern, as you can see, I am just connecting all the marks I placed on my pattern. The next thing you're going to do now is to take your bust span divided by two from your chest line all the way down to your hip line and now connect your marks. Now once this is done, take half inch on both sides of your waist for your darts 
and go upwards by one inch from your hip line and now we're going to connect our dot lines and now we are very much done with our dress pattern but one thing still remains we need to reduce our zip bulge now to do that you're going to go inwards by half inch on your waist line and now you're going to connect that half inch mark all the way to your chest line and also all the way to your hip line now on that half inch mark you took inwards you're going to take your zip allowance from that half inch mark now as you can see i am taking my one inch zip allowance and i'm going to connect the line like this now what i am doing is i am basically just shading where my new zip allowance is and once we are done doing this we're going to go on and cut out that piece that won't be needed as you can see that leftover piece and here you have your dress block as you can see we have come to the end of how to make a dress with no joining at the waist and now moving on to the part two of this tutorial using the same pattern i am going to show you how to make a dress with joining at the waist area which is also known as the body's block and the skirt block which once you join it at the waist area it turns into a dress now we're going to be cutting this at the waist area okay if you don't want yours to start at the waist and you want it to start at the lower part of your waist which is a navel point feel free to measure and cut it at that point you want and this always depends on the type of design you are going for and for this tutorial we are cutting it at the waist as you can see now fold your front pattern and set it aside because our focus is more on the back pattern now get your back pattern and we're going to cut this back pattern on the waist area because this is where we want our joining to be. Now on the center back of the skirt, you're going to go downwards by half inch and on this part of your upper body, also go downwards by half inch and connect it like this. And this in turn is going to help to reduce zip bulge extensively. Now, if you feel like when you make your when you're done stitching and you do not have lots of zip bulge, you can only reduce by half inch instead of reducing by one inch, which means you can just reduce your upper body's block by half inch and do not reduce the skirt. That means the skirt is just going to be as it is. Don't reduce anything. But if you feel like you have a lot of zip bulge, then do just what I just did, okay? So, um, we have come to the end of this tutorial, guys. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you like it. And I'll be seeing you in so much more tutorials to come. And thanks for watching, guys.